aggressively casual. Holy crap! We are here. We are here. Welcome everybody to Aggressively Casual episode one. I've tended to be called it Destiny. Where do we go from here? Everybody say hi, Cheeks. Cheeks, say hi to everybody. Hello. Here we are. Here we are indeed. Here we are here. indeed. Where do uh, we go from here? Boy, let me tell you. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know, for those of you who are new around here, um, Cheeks and I have a pretty aggressive love of Destiny. Um, I mean, if you yeah. look at my Steam here, I've played on PC 806 hours. Um, and that's just on PC. It doesn't include the Xbox. doesn't include PS5. And doesn't include my time in Destiny 1. I would say if you include both of those games, right? And if you include um, all platforms, I'm at around 2,000 hours total. Which I'm pales gonna, in comparison uh, to some people. But that's a lot of time in, in one series of game. Right. I have 760 since the Switch to Steam. That's right. You were correct. Because they, they were originally on... Um, right. They had Battle their own Net. launcher for a So right. I'm probably closer, to, I'm probably closer to 1,000 hours on, right. on PC. We're, we're probably both much closer to 1,000 hours on PC than, than yeah. Steam indicates. Right. Um, right. Now, you played, you played from year one, right? So I played Destiny from the original, um, the original like beta, and I actually we actually okay. played before that. Stu and I played mm. the first Destiny experience um, at right. E3 in 2014 when they cool. when they showed off the PvP, and Stu and I walked out from that experience and went, they fucking nailed it, because you don't want to know because it felt like Halo. Gunplay, which we loved, right, but right. in a different setting, different characters, different universe, and we were hooked right away. And then the game came out, um, and I originally played on the 360. Um, and then a year right. later, I upgraded to my Xbox One and continued to play <laughs> because they were about to shut shut the game down. Um, right. Well, shut shut the expansion support down, I think a year right. or two after the game came out on, on PC. Or sorry, on, on, on the Xbox One. Oh, no. because they, they, so, they, so I yeah. have a bit of a different relationship with how I came to Destiny. Mm -hmm. I tried it when it first came out. Now, right. keep in mind that I come to this as... Um, people are going to hate me for this. Not a huge Halo fan. Right? I don't... I don't... I, I like the world of Halo. I like right. I like the lore of Halo because I'm a lore whore. Um, Fair. Fair. But the games never really grabbed me. Maybe because I've always been primarily PC gaming. Okay. Even though I've had, even though I've had like every console, almost every console known to man. Um, right. Starting from a Telstar Pong machine in the mid 70s through your Ataris, your ColecoVision, you know, your Nintendos, your Playstations, and your Xboxes. I had the yeah. Xbox, I had 360, I have one. I have the S and I have two Xboxes in my house right now. Right. Um, but I still was primarily PC gamer. Okay. But but so but I so tried so Destiny so when so it first so, came so, out. Hang so on, Halo. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me get right, there. Go ahead, go ahead. I tried I tried Destiny when it first came out, and I didn't really like it. I was like, eh. Now, right. granted, this was the you know, level nothing. Here's your pistol. Don't die. Um, right sort of, you know, opening experience. I, I, I like the world. Again, I, I like the way they, they gave it in. Um, I kind of miss Dinklebot. Uh, Dinkle Ghost, if you will. Um, but I, I played it for, I don't know, man, I think I gave it a couple hours and it just wasn't gripping me. So okay. I was like, yeah, I don't think this is for me. So I put it away. Fast forward to the end of that first Destiny year. Um right at the very like last three days of sparrow racing okay i was i was up here in kansas city then i had moved up here well was in the process of moving up here i was actually couch surfing at a friend's and she played the hell out of it and she's like well you know what log on to my character and just play my character and give that a try okay so i logged into her what was then median light level hunter and got a taste of, of where Destiny was going. 
and I promptly ended up then putting my account on, uh, hey, you just left my fire team. You just lost, you just got kicked out for uh, <clears throat> uh, not doing anything. Yeah, game crashed. Oh, okay. Uh, so I promptly put my account on her Xbox and started again, my own. And so I got into the last three days of Sparrow Racing. Okay. And this was right before Taken King dropped and everything okay. changed. Yep. And when everything changed, I was like, okay, now this is good. Right. This, for me, that's when they nailed it. Right. That's when okay. they truly put the hammer down and said, this is, this is the game. This is your destiny. Right. Right. Um, and I, so again, we're talking about this. If you cannot hear in our voices that we have a love for this game, I don't know what to tell you. Right. 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 Which, which makes it so much worse where we're sitting right I, now. I, and I was about, later. I was about to say, you know, 10 years later, we're, we're two games in and, I think that we're in a really weird spot. Um, They're in a dire so, spot right now. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not, when it, when it comes to games in general, I'm not as doom and gloom as you are, which is part of the reason I love the idea of us doing this show, by the way, because right. I come up with a perspective of optimism and, and a perspective of, I do not, <laughs> I will give them, I will give them a chance to improve every time because I want the game to be good. I want all games to be good. You come it's from the perspective of everything sucks. <laughs> right. It's all shit. It's all shite. It's going to be shite. Your companies are doing nothing but feeding me a line. You will hear the phrase words in the wind a lot in the show. And, and I don't, and the thing is, I don't disagree with you on the fact of Bungie and other, and, 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 and other gaming companies in general have to, start showing instead of telling right and have to make good on the things that they talk about before I will, I, 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 I will give them that, that leeway. Sure. But right. I just, at the same and time, I, and you're not, you're not wrong. I come from a very kind of, at this point, pessimistic place and, and look at the gaming industry as I've watched the gaming industry shift from, well, frankly, not existing at all. Yeah. To, to being this kind of thing that only kids do, which was always dumb, by the way. And, right. And never true, actually. Correct. Um, also, also never true, but whatever. To to the juggernaut that it is now, and in many places, I think it's gone too far. Um, and what I mean by that is when you have game budgets that are in the hundreds of millions of dollars, yeah, there's no actual way to recoup that. Right and and, and and yeah and that, that 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 that's something that we've talked about privately for a long time and part of the reason why we wanted to do this show is because you know we we've seen we we we've seen this this uh, blow up of budgets and of expectations for games to succeed and there is no way that yeah, any of these can, games can are the ever ever yeah. going to meet those expectations. It's insane. Well, and this, like, that's the well, same too with games, movies, TV shows. I mean, we're specifically talking about games here, but nothing will ever live up to the hype at right. this point. Right. Because the hype train is just on such, you know, it's a Japanese bullet train at this point. Right. And, you know, yeah, a Japanese it's... bullet train with the weight of an old, old iron steam train. And it's just, you can't, you just, you can't match up to it, which is why, you know, a lot of times, like of late, especially over the last, what, two years, yeah. you'll send me stuff and I'm like, I don't want to see it. I don't, I don't want to know. Right. I don't, I don't want to know what they're saying. Right. Because then I can't be disappointed when they don't <laughs> deliver. <laughs> right. So Bungie last week put out a, 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 uh, a blog called Paving the Way for New Frontiers. And yeah. it, they, they put it out on the 10th anniversary of Destiny and a lot of it, I am so conflicted because Destiny is in a weird, weird place right now, post Final Shape and post another round of layoffs for Bungie. Right. Um, and now there's all this news about Sony, you know. Maybe they should lay off the one guy they need to lay off. I mean, what? I know, I know, they, what? I know. Well, so I, I was like. Talking... 
so there were the other night and i was wondering if there's a contractual thing there that right now sony literally can't get rid of him probably because there's something in the contract that gives him a set probably a space because it's not unusual right you can't you know um they did that when uh when microsoft acquired um blizzard yeah they were they actually came out and said we can't fire him right now right because we contractually have to hold on to him for like a year. Yep. Yep. And I'm wondering if that's kind of the same thing here. I would but, as- you know, I would assume so. If, my, my... if they were smart, they'd just be like, you know what? Go sit in your office, look at your car collection, collect your check, and shut your mouth. Right. But they keep letting him talk, and that's the problem. Right. Why so, so Bungie put out this, this blog. We'll, we'll go through a bit of it here. Because I do want to talk about the blog, and I want to talk about um, like how Sony seems to have a lot more influence in the, in Bungie these days. Anyways, um, a couple of interesting head uh, like 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 uh, uh, tidbits I pulled. That wasn't going to be the case. That's but he the but he, here's the thing: Bungie thought that wasn't going to be the case. That's the Bungie point I was just was about to make. Sh- Bungie was full of shite too. Executives there's, at there's Bungie. No way. <laughs> yeah, well, no, no, listen, we were just listen, talking about listen, too. listen to what I'm saying executives at Bungie thought that Sony was going to be completely hands-off. Bullshit. That was never going to be the case. If they thought that, they are all complete idiots. But you, you have to remember... three billion dollars on a company and have no say in what happens. Correct, but you have to remember, that's how it was when they were under Activision. Activision was mostly mm. hands-off with Bungie. Obstensibly. Yeah, you remember when we thought the problem was Activision? Right. But what I'm saying is Activision was mostly hands-off with Bungie. Therefore, they assumed, stupidly, that this would be Dumb. the same way. Yeah, they looked, they looked at it They looked at it like another happen. payday. Right. Now, now those things were but, never going to... And so they set themselves up for failure by pissing off Sony, because Sony's pissed the fuck off now. Well, right, because, because not they spent only three billion dollars. Right, because what? They, they, um, not only have did they spend three billion dollars, they did not get the tech they thought they were getting, right? Mm-hmm. Because Bungie didn't really invent anything. Bungie hasn't no. hasn't done anything super positive for the industry in terms of technology. Yeah, okay. No, no, no. Their their servers, because now granted, granted, I, their servers apart from Except launch days launch of expansions. Right. Apart from are, launch days. But that's, but that's every fucking game. So their servers, right. apart from expansions, especially, especially, are usually fucking rock solid, number one. Well, you know, there's no reason for that anymore. There, there really isn't. Because, yeah, I, of the, because right. as fast as you can spin up cloud servers these days, right. there is no particular reason that, at least for launch day, you don't go to, go to Amazon, go to Azure, Microsoft Azure, spin me up you know, a bajillion servers, yep. and nope, then we'll I, spin them down as we don't need them. And they just don't bother, and it just, then they end up pissing off their player base because now I've spent all this money for a game I can't play. Right. Well, um, the sorry, well, something in my throat. The um, the th- the thing there though is that is that that costs them money to spend those servers. But it doesn't. Up. But it but here's the game, but, it doesn't cost them that much money, and you're not going to keep them around for very long. Right. But when you have C-suite executives that are number crunchers, they're never sure. going to allow that. That's the problem. Well, it, and that's how we end up where we are now. Exactly. That's my point. Because they failed to do that. Right. Now they belong to Sony. And make no mistake, Bungie belongs to Sony. Right. End of story. Yep. Absolutely. Within another year, and I probably won't even take that long, Bungie as an entity will no longer exist. They will be a, they will be a wholly owned subsidiary of Sony if they even allow them to keep the name. I... I... <sighs> I, I I'm on the fence on that one because Bun the name the, the the Bungie name still holds weight, and a bit. I I I not nearly as much as it used to. But oh, a correct, bit. but it's been, the company's also been around for 32 years, so you it's hard to imagine Sony just going nah fold and bring everybody into Sony. I think no. that they would just I think that they would just do what they did with like with, with like um. Uh, uh, Santa Monica before Santa Monica, uh, what what was studio, uh, uh, Sony Santa Monica? They were uh, uh, oh fuck, I can't remember the the, the actual name, uh, but they would just be like you know Sony, you know comma Bungie whatever yada yada blah blah. blah. 
Yeah, um, they might but, do that. They might do that. But yeah, it's the amount. But it, it ends up being the same thing, right? Right. Your your Bungie as an entity is done, gone. Right. Over. So so beyond so basically the this the, this blog they put out right showcased right. the changes they want to make starting uh, summer twenty twenty five, and basically they're changing the road. They're they're changing the way that they release content. And they're changing what is in those releases. So instead Here's my of first question, can you even make it to summer twenty twenty five? Absolutely, point? absolutely. And I think that's a valid question. I, 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 they, they absolutely can. The diehards that play this game have kept it afloat and will continue to keep it afloat. Um, oh, there, there is so much doom and gloom around Destiny, but people forget that this is some people's only game that they play. It's the same thing they said about World of Warcraft for years. I, I don't forget that. It's yeah, the same Destiny thing as the player base World of Warcraft does, and they never um, have. Correct, but it's the same idea. Like people on the people always say that you know World of Warcraft is dead. This, that, the other World of Warcraft subscriber numbers are tanking. Yada yada blah 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 blah. Right, but look at what happened okay, with so, fucking well, okay, with, so with the, you that some, the War Within some expansion. Some of Destiny will probably be around. Right, but the real question is, how long is it really going to be viable before Sony just says we're done? That depends because on that. They've depends, been told. But, they've been told your ass better show a profit, and you better show it soon. But that depends on the content they deliver starting next summer. So they have to get to next summer. They have, right, and, and then not, and they they I'm they they, they, they will get there. They'll get there. They have to get there. They have to get there. They don't, they don't have any have other to. choice. Well, they, they, sure. Well, sure. They, if they, they want to continue sure. to exist, they have to get there. Correct. I'm not convinced they're going to make it because I and I'm looking even today. Even today, the lore daddy, the biggest lore daddy of them all, is like, I'm not going to cover Destiny all the time anymore. Well, right, that's but that's, but, that, but that's, that's also huge. because, but that's also because there's not as much content coming out lore wise for Destiny. It's never but, seemed to matter. He's always found something to talk about. Right, but w w we are at a point in Destiny where he's covered everything he can cover over the past over the past few years. He did a he did a fucking eighteen hour lore video for Christ's sake. Like, I know. I watched most of it because right. I'm a lore whore. Right. But you know, and that's it, really it's the uh, Destiny is such a such a dichotomy of gamification versus lore. You right. know, because in the lore, your dude is the guy. You right. are the man. Right. You are the dude. In the game, you're just another guardian, basically. Even though the story is always from your perspective, which I actually think, don't get me wrong, I actually think they right. do that really well. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that that even when you're running, you know, we we're running some of that campaign stuff. Hold, please. Dang it. Um, all of the cutscenes become from your character's perspective, right? Right. Right. So yeah, even yeah. if you're not. Even when we're here in a, when we're just it's you and me and Jeff or Stu or whoever doing our thing, you still get the story from your perspective. I yeah. actually think that does. So don't don't misunderstand me. I played this game for almost ten years. There's something about it that obviously I like, and right. I I've never hit. I, you know I've never tried to hide the fact that I I love Destiny. I want Destiny to be amazing. I want it to continue to be amazing. But right. since Destiny two especially, it just hasn't been. Right. It's had its moments. You know, um, yep. and we talked about this. I would actually, God, I saw it leading an article uh, a couple days ago where they were, somebody was complaining and that they did not think that the final shape really stuck the landing. And we talked about this. We both are of the opinion that for the most part, they stuck the landing. They made me cry. Yeah, they stuck the landing. You know, yeah. So, yeah. But this brings me back to the blog because, and our question is, where do you go from here? Well, because so that, we literally defeated darkness. How right? How do you continue a story after that? There's you, nowhere to go but down. But I I don't think that's the case. They have plenty of places that they can go. Like they 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 named this entire project code name Frontiers for a reason, right? They're gonna have to lean into that. And I mean, I want to see new planets, new races new everything but that's not what we're going to get we're no. going to get some new locations and the same old stuff the same old race the same races maybe with a different look some more of destiny one 
brought forward. You know what? Just port Destiny One to PC. I'll play it. Yeah, I mean that <laughs> I'll that, be but that that also port it to PC. Sure, I will play it. Sure, but we said that for ten, we said that for ten years and they haven't done it. Yeah, and I, I know, and I, so, and I don't know why. I don't know if it's an engine limitation, but I'm like, it's on the Xbox for fuck's sake, which is just a PC. Right. So with this this new code name Frontiers, whatever they're calling the expansion, what, 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 what they're calling this now, right? Basically, they're breaking it up. Instead of doing one big expansion release per year, they're going to two expansion releases per year. But they're going to be, you know, I, I don't want to say smaller. That sounds like a negative, but I mean, they have to be. They're going to that's be a, 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 a more curated experience. That's what they said. They're basically taking the one big expansion that they right? do and splitting it into two smaller ones. Right. First problem, same amount of content. But just, on the other hand, quicker delivery. Right? Quicker So quicker delivery, Still. I like. He, so basically what, what they've said here is that summer 2025, we're getting uh, the expansion, which is called Codename Apollo right now. Right? right. Summer 2025, we're going to get a major update, a Codename Arsenal. Back to the moon, confirmed. Which includes... Which includes um, a, a season of content, right? And a rewards pass, which is like the battle pass we have now, right? Right. Then Those aren't in going away because winter, that's the only really way they make any money. Of course, and the Eververse. But in winter 2025, we're going to get the second part of that expansion, which is, which is again, a major update. And then um, uh, in sorry, fall 2025, we're going to get Surge. Uh, winter 2025, we're going to get another, another, another expansion. And then spring 2026, we're going to get another, an, an, another major update well, right. as well. There's actually now, two what things they have that are said, They have these many expansions, but then they have these other free ones. Right. Right. So, so what, what they have said, right, so it's on the screen if you want to take a look. Expansions um, consist of new stories and locations, new missions, new weapons, new gear, new raids and dungeons. So the expansion is a typical... De figure quotes typical destiny expansion what you come to expect you're going to get a new story all these expansions whatever the seasonal updates are going to bring in new activities some previous activities um new gear new artifact mods new modifiers and challenges for higher level content um the new sandbox meta which sounds interesting on paper um given that you can just go and do whatever you want um yeah they've been and the saying other thing Keep but the, That's the, the no, no 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 I'm I'm talking about story wise Ed, they have said that you can go and you're going to be given a, a base mission and you can go and, and like A B C D, and you can go do D B C A if you want. There's no order that it, 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 it's a whole sandbox like it, it's it's a they, they, it's open world finger quotes if you want to call it that, right? Yeah. And then you have the rewards pass, which is the, you know, cosmetics and ornaments and some upgrade resources. The same stuff we have same now. Thing, same yeah. thing it is now, right? Yeah. So w some things are changing. Some things are reverting to the way they were before Final Shape. I, some I, things I are staying the same. I, I don't see this as a big change. I see this as just delivering the same thing they've been delivering, just some of it slightly faster. Which Expansions are expansions. Your right. seasonal update are just your seasons slash episodes that they're doing now. Right. So again, I'm like, how is this different? The only way to the only way we'll know is when we get there. Don't right. get me wrong. Right. Um, but to me, and again, cynical, grumpy old man me, this literally just sounds like the same shit I've been listening to since Destiny 2 launched. I've heard it all before, multiple times. Mm -hmm. Shut up, deliver. I mean, stop talking about it because you can't win this battle for one thing. Right. You put this stuff out and you're going to have some people who are like, oh, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Then you're going to have the other people who are like, this is the same thing they've been saying for years. Right. And I'm so I am I, 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 I am deliver. more the letter. I am more the letter because I've seen it time and time again. And I've always and I've always said, especially the past few years with, with Destiny, is you've got to stop talking about things. You've got to start showing me things. Like, show, don't tell is that, huge that in the gaming now, industry. What, the problem is, I think game companies right now, they talk too much. At this point, they engage with the community far more than they actually should. Right. I know that's a hot take. I mean... people want transparency and they want to know, but you're, you're not entitled to that. All you're really entitled to is the product that I deliver. Right. Now, here's, here's where... <sighs> They have to that communicate something. That looks like original something. Destiny concept art. Right? They have to 
communicate something because we pe people paid money for that product, and if they're unsatisfied with the product, there has to be a line of communication there. That being said, sure. some people expect too much out of communication from develop developers. They expect yeah. like that's, it's gonna be like, like they expect like it's gonna be like I'm talking to you right now. I can sit here and I can have every question I have answered. You know, one on one. What right. some people and, and some people take it too far, and that just that Most. that is that is what it is, right? Um, a lot of that is unfortunately due to the way we've curated online communities. Um, oh yeah, you're not wrong. A lot I mean, of that is I've a, lo my, a lot I've of that made is, my feelings known about the gaming community for quite some time. We a are, lot of that, a lot of that whole, is the way you're toxic. Yeah, a lot of that is the way that we have curated. You know the the uh, the, the the way that the curated expectations around the way the developers talk. Like the people now expect weekly updates because Bungie does it, right? Bungie, for all their faults, generally give you a weekly update in in writing. They give you a weekly yeah, they don't update. Don't know what to call it, but they but they give you one. Um, <sighs> go back to the go back to the, to this to the to the to, to, yeah yeah go back to the way it was. The stupid twin yeah. thing is dumb. So so what they have said here is their vision for the future is they want to do away with annual expansions, right? It said, starting next year, instead of one big expansion, we're going to offer two medium-sized expansions once every six months. Each of these will depart from the one-shot campaign structure we've been using, essentially unchanged in Shadowkeep, and each will be an opportunity to explore exciting new formats instead. Um, they say, we are excited to try new things that challenge your idea of what a Destiny experience can be. They are actively prototyping non-linear campaigns exploration experiences similar to what we had in the dreaming city or what you get in some metroidvania games and then and even more unusual formats like roguelikes or survival shooters so they're taking oh, all of these things these, from other oh. games and they're going to try to force i don't oh want to use force God. but they're, they're going leave to put them into destiny features re, leave the roguelike features out please um expansions now, was forsaken before or after shadow keep Oh God, I can't remember anymore. It I don't remember the I'm expansion look. order. I'm gonna look. Them. Do a quick Google. I thing. say that because yeah, because the first because Forsaken, that campaign was not that linear. You could actually do the bosses out of order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, what they also have said what, what, while you're looking that up, okay. what they also said is that departing from one shot campaigns doesn't mean we're turning away from great storytelling going forward. We want to return the mystery and wonder that was woven into the fabric of early destiny, which I agree with. I fucking, I, I agree with that because the story felt like it was full of these possibilities and you could just go anywhere and do anything and discover. And there was always something to discover. And unfortunately, as good as like the final shape was story wise, it just felt like we were being drug, drug along with our hand held through the expansion. It was very on rails. Yeah, yeah, it was, was very, very yeah. Was very... The answer is before it was Forsaken and then Shadowkeep. Okay, so. yep. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then they say for for, a while. for seasons. Uh, they said with the change of ex to two expansions per year, seasonal model will be changing as well. We're not going to get three episodes because the episodes tanked. Let's be real. They 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 tried to deliver us well, something. With, the episode with... tanked. There's only been one. So... Right. Sure, but they tanked. They, they performed so poorly, they're moving away from the episode model after one episode. And really, not even an episode. After but two acts really of not. an episode. They're so still they dropping are, the other two episodes. They're just not going to time gate them. Well, right. So that's, but, right, but, that's, they're, that's, but, they are, but they are moving away from the episode model, and they're moving to a, a what they call a major update model. So it's going to be once every three months, you will get a tomato, major update. Tomato. Right. But I'm just saying that this is what they're calling them. I'm explaining this, right? Like, basically, the major update will follow, will be... So, basically, every expansion will launch with a major update. And then three months later, you'll get another major update to refresh the game with new Enterprise content. They say it includes activities like strikes, exotic missions, or new modes like Onslaught. Uh, rewards will be weapons, armor, artifact mods, exotic, whatever. Uh, new weekly events, new features... And when when they when they vague talk like that, I'm like, great. But what does that mean? It drives me crazy. Well, that 
That, to why, me, that means the same shit we've been doing, just with a different look. Well, and now they're because saying seasonal. So far, every time they've changed the model, that's what's happened. It's been right. the same thing, only just a different. Oh, another saying you're, you're going to present the same stuff slightly differently. Yeah, fair. Now, another saying the big seasonal resets will still happen, but they'll be twice a year instead of you know four times a year, alongside the expansions. Each update will be a substantial refresh of the core game. I I will see. Because they've said that every time a season, it's going to be a new season, going to be a huge refresh, and it's always recycled content. Always. It's it's the same activity we did the season previous with right. a different artifact mod and it, some it, names like, again, changed. Again, from my standpoint, I'm literally sitting here and go, I've read this before. Right. So we, right, so we have yeah. core game. The core game is, uh, is Destiny's always available evergreen activity experience, and we need to fix two key things with it. Approachability. Yeah, this game, you can't fucking approach it. Yeah, new player experience if, is her- is horrible right now. If the, the 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 new player experience, the returning player experience is garbage, awful. Yeah. They and at least in the first sentence they address it. They say first, Destiny is too complex. Yes, with with literally hundreds of activities, you practically need a PhD to decide what to play and how to get the rewards you're looking for, or you need a friend to handhold you and drag you along. Yep. So they want to fix this. <coughs> Excuse me. By modernizing the activity uh, activity UI, the director to make it easier for everyone to find and launch into great activities. Um, I think this has a photo with it. Let's see. Uh, yeah, okay. It's, just, it's from the developer insight where they shared um, a an, a workup, a mock up of what it's going to look like, uh, or just what, like what they have working right now. I mean, it looks. Yeah, I I I'd say that looks like a pretty standard modern UI. Um, and then, uh, they said to make it easier for everyone to find and launch great activities and we're reworking the reward model to make sure those activities offer meaningful rewards. So what that hopefully means is that, you know, we can That's do key right there. We're not, we're not going to do three fucking strikes and get rewarded with nothing. Well, and that's the key, right? This has been my one right. primary complaint about destiny two over destiny one, right? In destiny one. The friends and I would have, we would get in and spend an entire evening just running strikes or running crucible. Just that's it. It's all we would do because every so often you would get that strike specific loot or right. that crucible specific right. loot and that, that one upgrade, right? right. It might right. not be a huge upgrade, but it was an upgrade. Yep. You don't get that in Destiny 2. No. You no. can run strikes so, to your blue in the face, yeah. and it's all going to come in at the soft cap, and that's it. So what they have what they have said here is the next headline said, gear and challenge should matter. Yes. every Even great activities stop mattering if a challenge dries up and the rewards aren't worth it. Look at us. We don't play the game right now because of this exact problem, right? So they said, we are investing in a greatly improved challenge customization system to let players of any skill range find the right challenge for them. Uh, with rewards that improve based on the challenge level you take on. That concerns me. Because what that sounds like to me is that we are going to gate the best rewards behind the highest level content. And yeah, um, do that, so, you know. And, you know, I mean, well, not not necessarily, no, because we currently get guns really? that are good. We get guns that are good. Good, good, yes. And that will probably continue, but the best content is still gated. It's gated yeah. in it's gated in trials. It's gated in having to do the raids, which you can do. You have a group. I don't. I haven't raided in. I, I've made, I've done two rooms of one raid in Destiny Two. Whereas in Destiny One, we had everything on farm. Let's see. These won't just be simple incoming damage increases either. The team is cooking up some great gameplay modifiers that give enemies yada yada yada. Basically, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna make them damage sponges. It sounds like. As for the rewards, there will be higher tiers just, of legendary they gear. They said they weren't gonna. As for the rewards, there'll be higher tiers of legendary gear of like like adept weapons and artifice armor that will be available from these higher challenge ranges in a much wider variety of activities across both PVE and PVP. These two changes will help the core gameplay experience be easier to drop into and much deeper in terms of variety and pursuit of personal mastery. Um, and they're a starting point mm-hmm. for ongoing changes aimed at continuing to improve Destiny in these regards. So then they say the next multi-year saga starts with Codename Apollo, right? Um, let's see here. Uh, she, uh, oh, Allison started oh, doing... Before we move on, we're not done with this topic. All right. We're not done with this topic. They're still going to gatekeep. 
that, you want to know what that says to me? What? This is for you people that make a job out of our game. Because you're the only ones that are ever going to see these top tiers. That's it. I'm looking this at their... Catering, I'm, I'm this looking, is catering to the 1%. So I'm, I'm looking at their deep dives right now that they did, right? The, the, the developer insights to see if they answer any of those questions, right? Um, because they say, you know, for example, the core game rewards one, right? Uh, it says core game expansion and event activities will feature a reworked reward offering that provides a deeper reward chase across a wider range of activities. TLDR weapons and armor will be available in a deeper range of quality across a wider range of activities. That's good. Core game activities will have dedicated reward pools for different categories of activities. Also good. Also gear good. will be labeled new gear during the season is introduced and it's easier to recognize a build craft around. Also good. Also um, good. Yeah. So they said the problem in past destiny seasons, only a narrow range of activities received updated rewards. So you were stuck <coughs> playing the, basically the seasonal activity. If you wanted to get any of the rewards from the season, uh, the reward pools tend to not be very deep either with most chases bottoming out with weapon perk rolls or crafting recipes and armor didn't really matter. Right. These problems have resulted in shallow, unsatisfying grinds and a tiny subset of activities uh, actually available to play mm -hmm. with their best rewards being a, rather, uh, a matter of luck rather than skill or mastery. They say the solution is weapon and armor tiers. Legendary weapons and armor will be available in a deeper range of quality tiers that layer on properties like stat bonuses, enhanced perks, and other benefits. For weapons, this will be similar to how adept weapons upgrade the baseline legendary. The baseline tier of legendary weapons and armor will be equivalent to current day legendaries. Higher tiers generally equivalent to adept weapons in terms of upgrades. Um, so they have a mock up here of kind of how it would work. Basically, you yeah, have your the, your gun, um, <coughs> and then the adept one would upgrade. This isn't so much different like as just now. more, which is yeah. which is fine. Which is it's fine just, in this case. It's right? fine. Yeah. They said that they are these higher tiers of weapons and armor will be available from the full range of core game activities as rewards for higher challenge tiers and mastery of those activities. So this could this could be a this could be really interesting. What I'm envisioning, and I have no idea if this is the case, but what I would like to see is if we say we want to run, let's say we want to run strikes, right? We love to run strikes. That's what we do, right? If we run, you know, uh, the like uh, the regular strikes, we get the we get the legendary rewards. If we run like the next tier up of strikes, let's, let's say like a, like a current like nightfall range, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to drop a higher level of that of that gear. But the question is, can I run those excessively, incessantly, all week long if I right. want to, or right. are you going to cap me the same way you currently cap me? Because well, I, 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 if, if it's you, me, and Jeff playing, the likelihood is we're going to run strikes and we're going to run a seasonal activity, right? We're right. never going to touch PvP for the most part. We're not, not, unlikely. Not if it's all three right. of us, no. Right. The three of us are unlikely Although, to touch. at this point, we might be able to drag him into Gambit. Fair. Fair. But what I'm saying is, um, like, my hope is, and what I envision, what they're saying, is that we would just be able to run... Those like if, if we want to just log log on one night and run strikes, we're gonna run strikes and we're gonna get right. a million rewards it's the for destiny strikes. One thing, run yeah. strikes because yeah. that's what you want to do. Yeah, so it says here, re um. reward pools are a complete set of weapons and armor that are available rewards from one or more activities. Some weapons are shared across multiple pools, but the majority of weapons and armor are unique True. to a single pool. Interesting. Um, a typical yeah, pool yeah. is full. See, I, don't, I don't particularly care for that. I'd rather have them all available. I'd rather have a smaller chance to get it in any activity. Because so, once yes. again, if I want that gun, but it's only available in Crucible, and I don't play Crucible. Because you know, that's what I'm looking at right now. It says all the rewards are available to all tiers, so each reward pool is deep and supports a range of challenge in the activity they are, they are associated with. The major core gameplay reward pools will be updated in every major update and will be core PvE. Rewards shared amongst the most successful PvE like uh, activities like strikes, core sure. PvP, same thing before like Crucible Playlist, Pinnacle PvE, um, rewards shared among more intrinsically challenging PvE activities like Dungeons, and Pinnacle PvP, uh, the same before like Trials of Osiris. What that I does not mean, dollar, though... 
What that does not mean is that they're going to give Pinnacle rewards only for those higher tier rewards. I want to clarify and that because somebody but mentioned it to me the other day and it's not true. you a dollar, that's what happens. I have to find it because some, somebody clarified. They're going to lock. They're going to lock some shit behind the trials. To, well, everything. Here's the thing. They, they flat out tell you that things are going to be locked behind certain activities. And I, that I don't like. Right. If right. I want that gun, but it only happens in trials. Well, I'm SOL unless I can, you know, pug my way through trials, which Lord knows. You know, or it only happens in dungeons. Right. There needs to be a way. It, it may it make it rare. I don't care. Make it ultra rare. That's fine. But there need and don't in any way you go, you're gonna, they're going to lock out the higher tiers to obviously the highest tier activity. That's well, fine. sure, sure. I mean, yeah, that, that that's whatever. But they, they, yeah, that's that's to be expected in any MMO. Like right. that's how that is. But there is a thing that does. It just depends on you know how good. And right. we saw that with that stupid sparrow, right? Um, what was the one that was? For a long time, was faster than anything else. Um, oh, and they, yeah, yeah, yeah. They finally decided. Oh, wait, that's just a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I they know, fixed it. The way, and for once, I'm gonna give props to Bungie. So you write this down. Oh God. For once, they they fixed it in the manner they should have fixed it, and they brought everything else up to that one as yep. opposed to nerfing that one. Yep. 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 Agreed. That's how you fix that, right? So the the other so part of the the other part of the. End, So the other part of the developer insight they dropped was on the the portal, which is the how the how you're going to interact with these activities, right? And you know they said that. You're cutting uh, out. Am I? Can you hear me now? How about now? Can you hear me now? I can't hear you on Discord. I wait. Say something else. Hey, hello. Hello. How about now? There you are. You're back. Yeah, you cut out completely. Weird. Um, So the other thing that they talked about is in their in the developer deep dive is the portal, which is how you're going to engage in all these all these activities, right? Um, They say the name may change. It'll be an easier, modernized way to browse and launch core game activities, and it will give a varied selection of new and active activities across a wide range of activity types. Um, So TLDR. The portal will offer several categories of activities, each with a wide selection of new and updated activities refreshed every three months with each major update. Um, all activities in the portal, portal excuse me, will provide updated and worthwhile rewards, so it will be easy to find something to play. I have to agree that is a big problem with Destiny right now. It does not tell you where to go to do what you want to do. Right. It yeah, just it throws doesn't. it throws the director at you and goes... Have fun. Have fun. Have fun. The destination. The castle. Which right. castle? There's a lot of castles here. Right. The destination map will be my cleaned up. Is going to be in a different one, but you know, <laughs> got to point me in a direction. <laughs> the destination map will be cleaned up and focus on world navigation and access, a, a, accessing older activities. All right. Cool. So let's see. The problem. The destination map, also called the director, is Destiny's venerable activity browsing and selection screen. It's terrible. Um, but over the years, it has grown to be very unwieldy. Yes making it harder to find specifically what's current and worthwhile to play. Also, yes. And requiring ever more expert knowledge to navigate and find what you're looking for. Yeah, that, that, that's a problem you created, Bungie. <laughs> I don't know how to well, tell you this, but you created this they, problem. Yeah, well, and, and some to some extent, every long-running game, multiplayer game, ends up with this problem. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the World know, of Warcraft some, fucking some map is a mess. Better. Yeah. Right. If you look at the WoW map, it's a mess. Look at the Warframe map. Holy crap! They're trying right. to figure out what to do there. Well, you know, same problem. We have it. I mean, War, War, Warframe, Warframe is just not new player friendly in general. But that's another topic for well, another day. But, uh, yeah, but the thing is, it's still messy. Is my point? Yeah. Because again, it actually technically predates Destiny by a year. Correct. So it's been around and it has the same problem. Yeah. Correct. Is my so point. what they've they don't said? Have the same problem. Yeah, they all do. So what they've said here with portal categories is the individual categories available within the portal are solo ops, fire team ops, flashpoint ops, pinnacle ops, and crucible. Um, solo is the one to three player activities requiring very low time or special equipments. So they're designed for solo players. So I'm assuming it's a, 
Let's see. It says, are yet still a fun with the fire team or easy to pick up and play for a quick session. So it's, 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 it's the aggressively casual crowd. <laughs> uh, solo for ops God's feature. Sake, for God's sake, take the damn battlegrounds out of the strike list. If right. Solo ops will feature a new activity tab, which we're going to deep dive soon. That's neat. Fire team ops, Although, three player activities are match made or pre made groups designed for fire teams with more cooperation and coordination. Things like strikes, onslaught, the coil, and new types in the future. Flashpoint is like raids, so six player activities um, for match made or pre made groups. Plan for a future season. This category will be introduced later next year. It'll feature more chaotic six player combat like offensives. That's interesting. All right. Yeah. Pinnacle Ops are three three player activities featuring ch more challenging combat content, including dungeons, exotic missions, mm. full length onslaughts. Uh, Pinnacle Ops have an exclusive reward pool to claim, but success is not guaranteed. And then Crucible is you know just hey here's all our PvP okay. crap. You know I should um, take the battlegrounds out, but if you redo the rewards so that they're actually viable, I'd be okay with it. Right. Really, the problem with battlegrounds right now is they take way too damn long for nothing. Right. Exactly. In addition, in <laughs> addition to the above categories, Portal also gives direct access to current expansion activities, as well as any currently running events like Iron Banana or Festival of the Lost. Cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. Objective streamlining. The Portal will also host consolidated and stream -like si streamlined side objectives. I can fucking read. Like bounties or seasonal challenges. The aspect of the redesign is still a work in progress, but the primary goal is to re re greatly reduce the number of chores that need to be done before Your diving words. into an activity. I will be sharing more about this change later in the year. Thank God. Because look, okay, I play World of Warcraft. I love World of Warcraft. I don't love having to play the game before I play the game. Right. It's driven yeah. me batty for years. And, again, and it's driven me batty in is, Destiny 2. Yeah, that's a, it's a, a, a side effect, if you will, of long-running multiplayer games. How many, because, times, how many times have you and I tried to go into an activity and then went, aw, shit, we need to get our bounties. Right. right. And now we're stuck waiting for somebody for 20 minutes. Or I need to get this thing out of my vault. Oh, fuck. Right. All right, I'm right. going to go order a pizza. I'll be right back. Eventually. You'll still be going through your vault when I get back. All right. But then Let's again, see. I come from right. the thing of, if you look at my vault versus everyone else we know, my vault is empty. Right. Essentially. Right. I don't keep shit. I don't hoard shit in games. It's so weird. Everybody's like, my vault is full. I got, well, why do you have 14 copies of Hawkmoon? Right. What could you possibly need with 14 copies of that gun? Well, you know, and Hawkmoon's a bad example because it's, there's, although now it's not because there are uh, random perks on it. But it's like, well, you know, why do you have 14 copies of whatever that thing, whatever the generic no time to explain is? Well, because this one's got this perk for this situation and this one's got that perk for this. Just put the gun in your hands, pull trigger, make dead, go. Right. You know, right. Pew pew bang. Let's go. Come pew on. pew bang. Yay, we did it. Yay. Right. So oh, look, marathon. <sighs> that game's gonna crash so hard. I get, I get, it suppose, might, that supposedly, game might be the greatest thing since sliced bread, and it's gonna crash so hard. Supposedly the game doesn't exist. Um I've talked to well, a handful I've heard that. Well here, here's the deal. I've talked to a handful of creators who have said that that game, like they were, they were brought to Bungie to play mm -hmm. that game, and no one liked the game. So they have been trying for two years to fix it, and they cannot fix it. That is what nice. I have been told. Now, granted, take it with a grain of salt because that is that is third hand information at this point. But that is what I have been told. Talking to creators who were there, talking to people who who have who have seen the game, right. that it is for all intents and purposes just not there. Um, and there was actually an article this morning I saw that said that Destiny 2's content expansions may eat in to what Marathon was supposed to do and, and the dev team they were supposed to have, because Sony sees that Destiny 2 is a known entity. Right. and a known property, and they think that right. Destiny can bounce back. Whereas Marathon... It's a problem, right? Where, but, no, but whereas Marathon is an unknown, and it's, and right. it's, a, it's a fucking extraction shooter entering a market yeah. where there That's are a true. million extraction shooters now. 
because they've yeah, waited too but, damn long to put the game out. But the fact that Sony is like, screw that, let's go with the known quantity, is a problem. But Hollywood has the same issue right now. Nobody wants to invest in new IPs. But you gotta mm. go all in. That's the problem. Mm. They just want to kind of like, here we go. Let's just do this. But but see, but see, here here's the thing. They Sony did go all in on a new IP with Concord, and it fucking failed. Well, right. And the worst but of that, it is, is the worst of it is, I played Concord. It was good, but it wasn't what we needed. It was. It was a. It was a, if that game. If Concord came out five years ago, that game would still be running today. Or well, you could say that a lot of a lot of games. Right, but Concord but, was a yeah, game it. out and of its time. Timing is everything. Yeah, and timing is everything. But my point is more generic. If you fail, if you just stop and like, okay, no, we're just going to go with this known property. Well, then everything stagnates, right? Right. You get you get Madden eighteen thousand three hundred thirty two. Right. Oh, um, right. You know or. You so, know, of course, it's an NFL game. How much can you make it better from season to season? I get that, but at the same time, well, here's here, here's yeah. the, here's the thing with Madden, right? Uh, I, I I've talked to my friends who have worked and currently work at EA, right? And they say that people inside of EA would like to not release a new NFL game every year because of the contractual obligation they have with. That's really weird. Because of the contractual right. obligation they have with with the right. NFL, they have to sure. release a new game every year. I personally think that they could still get away that they could still get away with just releasing title updates every year, right? And charging you know half the cost. And if you want to right. spend the charging money on 20, mutt, 30 bucks, do it that way. Bucks on, and they would still the and, and they would still make bucks. and they would still make just as much money. But people are going to people are paying seventy dollars a year for an experience they're not getting. Now the other thing I wanted to talk about uh, is is th this IGN article. Um, it's right. kind of a mashup of a, of a couple different articles I saw um, with Sony forcing Bungie to quote get their heads out of their asses and run Destiny Two like a business is very much a good thing. Uh, is an ex said an ex Bungie lawyer, um, right. and what it says here. Uh, uh, is a former Bungie lawyer has commented on upcoming improvements to the live service shooter, um, saying that the role of the role of parent company Sony enforcing. Wow, I can I, I can read saying the wow whoa, that's just a weird sentence. Uh, saying the role of parent parent company Sony enforcing through these changes is very much a good thing. Um, we just talked about them unveiling all of their major changes to Destiny Two. That will win back some players. We don't need to go about that, right? No, let's uh, but focus Destiny on the 2, word there. Hopes will win back players. Well, sure, right. I'm not there, convinced there, it will. There's no guarantee. There's no guarantee. Yeah. So it says, um, let's see. Uh, in a, too. we talked. We just talked. Banned in a project. Yeah, it's very you know, true. Quite often, get, get, once get. they're like, we're done, then then it doesn't matter what you do. Correct. So um, let's see here. In a LinkedIn post, Don McGowan. Uh, former general counsel of Bungie reacted to a Kotaku article rounding up the Destiny 2 changes to say he was pleased with Sony's apparent influence here, which he said means the studio is finally running the game like a business. Uh, quote, much as it pains me to say this, it appears Sony inflicting some discipline on my former colleagues may have forced them to fix things that were wrong with their game. Uh, to be clear, I'm not talking about the layoffs. I'm talking about forcing right. them to get their heads out of their asses and focus on things like implementing a method of new player acquisition, not just doing fan service right. to the fans in the in the Bungie C-suite and running the game like a business. Good. I still have friends in that environment, and I like them to keep jobs. Uh, this is the future I thought the company should get embraced after the Sony acquisition. A studio, not an independent company, but there were a lot of egos for whom it was important to pretend like nothing would change. Where have we heard of that before? Um, sure. I remember sitting there during but the deal were, saying, I think we've do you think said they were just pretending there was never going to happen. Yeah. 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 I remember sitting there during the deal saying, do you think Sony describes this as them getting to pay 3.6 billion for the right to have no input on what Bungie does? That was what a lot of people, uh, that was what a lot of people thought. Uh, that's what I said earlier. Right. I and guess they've been, been given there's a lot of fucking idiots in that office. Then. Correct. Cause that was never going to happen. Correct. I guess they've been given cause to understand that's not how things work. Good. <laughs> the changes described, right? The changes described in this article. Portion, portion of the program. Right. 
the things you do, the thing, the things that they change to describe in this article are the things you do to run a franchise, not keep making the game you and your friends have mastered or to chase trends. Um, let's see. Changes come during a period of speculation. Yada, da, 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 da. Sony has, uh, Bungie has 850 employees. Yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Pete Parsons says, okay, cool. So basically, yeah. That 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 is the this is the gist of what I wanted uh, of what I wanted to go over is that it sounds like they are finally being forced to run the game as a business like they should have been doing the entire fucking time. All right. Um, and they are now having to do you know and the difference though between this acquisition and the Activision acquisition when Activision acquired Bungie. Yeah. Destiny was hot and they were printing money. Yeah, it's true. When Sony acquired Bungie, they were hemorrhaging money. That's a world of difference yeah. over the situations there. Yeah. And, you know, why Activision was like, hey, you just do what you do and keep writing us a check. Yep. Sony's yeah. like, no, we got to recoup some of this investment. Yeah, no. And so, we're, I mean, we're gonna overall, get it in if we have to. Yeah. So, overall, like, you know, we, 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 we titled the name of this episode, Where Do We Go From Here? And I, I think that we, as the, as people in the Destiny community, have to take everything that they say with, like, an entire, like, tablespoon of salt. At least. At least. Until they show just, us, just leave the can of salt on my desk. Right, just leave it there. I'll just keep. Uh, I need it for right? lots of reasons. Right, exactly. Uh, um, until they show us that what they're talking about actually has legs, because right. they've said a lot of things in Vidox, in blogs, in right. in in Reddit posts, in 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 twids every every week. They've said a lot of things about this game over the years, and not all of them come to fruition. So it's right. not worth getting overly excited and, oh, Destiny's back about Here's the any thing of Bungie's this. Bungie's never learned under what? promise, over deliver. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't over promise oh, yeah. and undeliver. I'm looking at you, No Man's Sky, originally. Right. But, but that's another story, because again, that goes back to the hype train, which I refuse to get on, and I actually like the game that came out. Right. But I didn't, you know, I wasn't concerned with everything that they had said they were going to do that they didn't do because I didn't pay any attention to that because I was like, ain't no way. Right. Right. You know, but so, in this case, Bungie needs to underpromise and then overdeliver. Right. So, so the, 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 that was the point that I was making is that, is that we need to listen to what they say and read what they say. And then when they show us things in the future, go, well, this isn't what you said, or this, how does, how does X line up with Y, right? right? How does the thing you told me line up against the thing you showed me? Why are these changes different if there are changes? And they have to have actual non-PR corporation speak reasons for those things. Well, that'll never happen. This I whole thing reads like PR. Sure, but I think that it could. Oh, um. It, I, it, I, think it it sure. I think that it could. No. I think that it could. I think that the community managers that are left for this game, I think I, I think that they understand that they can't get away with corporate speak. And and to be real, the community managers for this game that are on Twitter and Reddit really don't corpo speak. Um they they really don't. They 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 talk pretty real and always have. Um in fact some have gotten fired for doing that. Right. Um but so that's my take on where we go from here. We need to we need to be cautiously optimistic about what they say, hold them accountable for what they do and how those changes are different if there are any, and just wait until we get this get through this you know weird episode, you know, thing through until summer 2025 basically. That's a long wait from now, but there are plenty of other games to play. Yeah, that's a um, that's a hell of a content drought. Right, but here's well, the but thing. that's the thing. It's not a content what happens, drought. Though, it's not a content drought. They're, they're still going to put the episodes out. It's not a content drought. Content drought. How is it um, a content drought? They're, they're putting out the content. Most people are going to blast through the episode in a day. Sure. You know that's the sure, thing. And, and that's a good thing. So the way untime gating things is a double edged sword. Right? right. Correct. The time gating is com just 
fucking annoying the way it works. It's like, okay, I spent my 20 minutes this week. I'll come back and spend my 20 minutes next week. On the other hand, if it's only takes me, you know, what, what, what is usually one four, four or five weeks? Six usually six to eight. Six well, weeks. So six well, weeks. Is, they 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 were doing they were doing them on like eight to ten week things, but the story stopped around like week right, six. Right, or right. Seven. But the story stopped around week six, right? Yeah. So yeah, let's assume let's be generous and say it takes me an hour to go through each piece. Yeah. So once I've burned my six hours, well, now what do I do for the rest of the time? Well, but on the, on the other hand, don't force me to wait a week just to play for an hour, and that's what that's been the big frustration. Right. Right. But whatever, we'll see. If the game's still here, great. I'm not convinced it will be. At least, I mean, it'll be here in some form. Um, I'm not convinced that that won't be just, okay, we're putting this thing in maintenance mode and we're just going to go until it just nobody plays it anymore. Um, I hope that's not the case. I really do. I hope that this is the bomb. I hope that this is everything we've ever wanted from Destiny. Yep. Not going to happen, but, you know, give me half of it, whatever. Just make it better at this point. And the bar's not real high, guys, so you don't have really far to go to, to get over that bar at right. this point. Right. You know, right. so I'll give you that. Just, you know, it's kind of like, <laughs> remember what I said about The Force Awakens? Please don't suck. <laughs> yep. That's pretty much my bar. Yep. Bungie, please don't suck. Yep. You know, I mean, um, and, and, and let's talk about that, though. Story. Because this is what I'm here for. I'm here for the lore. I'm here for the world. The, the, the shooting mechanics, Destiny has always had really good shooting mechanics, right? Yep. The minute-to-minute gameplay has never been the problem. Right. You know, um, the minute-to-minute gameplay, they may, and again, here you go, just to prove that I do give them props, it may be the best minute-to-minute shooter out there. Yeah. No, Especially in the sci-fi genre. Maybe not the, you know, I mean, if you want realism, Destiny ain't for you. Absolutely. Um, but if you want a shooter that just feels good to, on the minute to minute, when you pick up a gun, unless it's a completely shite gun, there are some guns that I'm like, this thing sucks. Sure. Let's put this down and never That's pick any it up game. again. That's any game. No. But right. Yeah. But for the moment, for everything, the moment to moment gameplay is really good. The shooting is just out fucking standing. Yeah. But that's never really been a question. Right. No. It's yeah. there's only so much of that I can do without something else wrapped around it. Right. You know. Right. Says the guy who plays open world space games and space trucks around the fucking galaxy all the time. Fair. Um so but let's talk about the story because this is important to me. It's very important to me. Where do we go from here? Back to the back to that topic. And my problem is where do we go from here? We beat darkness. There really isn't a big or bad. So trying to go bigger is a bad idea. But they haven't, again, to to their credit, they haven't said they're going bigger. No, but that's been the, that's been the pattern for 10 years. And that's going to be a pattern that's going to be very hard to break. Fair. But I mean, to to, to their credit, to their credit, they have been very intentional about saying uh, about the, about the words they've used in describing the incoming content. Sure. But my question is, can you make something smaller compelling enough to draw people in? And this is this is just all conjecture, right? Right. Not, not what they will do, what they won't do, because we know Bungie can tell a good story. Right. They quite often they they quite often can't end one, but they can tell one. Right. Their intros are great. The middle part's great. Quite a f- quite often they don't stick the landing. There are some notable exceptions to that, obviously. I, again, we did say final shape for the most part stuck the landing. You know, it stuck the yeah. landing in some predictable ways, but at the same time, it stuck the landing, and that's all you can really ask for. But where do we go from here? Because how a for a god killer who can present any kind of actual threat, right? Right. And we've seen this before, even in Destiny, like going back to, well, let's go back to Forsaken when, you know, old Spider was sitting in there trying to, let's make a deal. And I'm like, I'd be like, why aren't we like, I'm going to make you a deal. You tell me what I want to know. I don't pull this place down around your ears. How's that for a deal? Right. (laughs) Because that dude never had any teeth. Right. Ever. Story wise. It's like, 
Why should this guy impress me? whoop de shit. So he's right. the godfather of the fallen. Do you know what I did last week? I killed three gods just last week. Right. Yep. I turned I mean, them all that, into guns. Yeah, I mean that that that, that power that, that that power creep's always been a problem. Um, and, and right. we'll, well continue to be a point, problem. Though, yeah. So and, it, and unfortunately, it's probably going to continue to be a problem. I would really and, and I have zero hope for this, by the way. Really like to see them do something to bring that that to where I feel like, oh, this is a threat. This is this is I, I get invested, right? Fair, fair, um, yeah. Because that's what I want, right? That's what that's that's what I want from a story is I want to get invested. Yep. Nope. Trust me. I, I mean, in the well, characters, we, we all do. I want to get invested in the. Thing. You know, some people don't care. They just want the moment to moment shooting. You know, um, which is fine. Whatever. That's your bag. No kink shaming. You know. Um, but I want to. I, so I am concerned about where do we go, and I truly hope that they lean into frontiers because we still haven't really left our solar system right to, to me to me frontiers is the start of branching out into other areas um and i i think that they're they, them being very intentional about talking about you know we want to take ideas from other types of games we want to you know, we, we don't just want to be that's game the, mechanics, you know, though. that has nothing to do with the story what that's game mechanics that has nothing to do with the story right sure but you, I mean, but I'm, I mean, we're just talking about like, the, we, you, you, you want to branch out the game to other, other air. I, I think, I think that Frontiers is the start of that. Um, I think it will take time, and it's just a matter of of Sony giving them that time. And right, nothing's going that, to happen overnight. That's for sure. Even right. Even if this, even if they drop this, you just, you have to be, you have to be good enough to compel people to go. All right, I'm going to hang around a little longer. Right, exactly, um, exactly, and 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 that's not saying like everything is riding on this, you know, on on this, you know, first Codename Apollo expansion. Like, I think that Sony will give them no, you know, I another... think they'll give them Apollo, they'll give them Behemoth. Yeah, I'm not convinced they'll give them anything after that. That's that's my thing. It's like I I think that we are guaranteed Apollo and Behemoth, and I think that everything else beyond that hinges on the hinges on the reception to both of those. Assuming um, assuming the player base doesn't completely tank from boredom in that time frame. Right. Assuming assuming that by summer they just haven't said, nah, we're going on maintenance mode, screw it, it's not worth the investment anymore. And that's that's a fairly safe assumption. I, I, I have to agree. I'm being a pessimist here. Um, because it's what I do. You're the optimist, I'm apparently the <laughs> pessimist. So, you know, screw you, I'm gonna be grumpy. <laughs> um Assuming they don't kick this thing into maintenance mode, like there's no player base left, right? Uh, then, then yes. Uh, speaking of, let me look at. Um... I'm actually curious. We pull up Steam charts. That's exactly what I'm doing. Get out of my head. Built it by built it by category. No, can I just search? Here we go. Current players are twenty four thousand. All time I mean, peak uh, is three hundred and sixteen. Now, granted, thousand from from Steam. Yeah, I mean that's on Steam, which is which is is huge. I mean that that's a lot for a game that is currently in you know what is considered the doldrums of content. That is that is a that 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 is a that is a large number. Um, if it dips to if so it if dips I look at to, a year over yeah. a year. Um. Same well, well, good. you have to remember that that uh, the expansion launch in June is gonna is gonna inflate those numbers oh, yeah. a little There's bit. There's a huge peak right there. But here's the thing: I'm looking at this from a year, and from the expansion launch in June, yeah, those numbers that is almost a straight down from right there. Oh, yeah, of course, because but 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 that, I mean, that, that, but that was but that if was, you that, look at but but the thing is, look yeah. at the look at the look at the year graph. Call it up. Look at the year graph, and you can see it peak and ebb and ebb and flow. And then it starts to rise as we get closer and closer to the final shape. Yep. Because the, the hype train was real um, for that. Um, it's like, what All was right. December of 2023? What was December? Because that. Well, yeah. That, so, I mean, if, if we there. pull, if we pull, I mean, year over year. Yeah. I mean, look, like, like you can see where they were. Yeah. Click on it. Click on a year there. Click yeah, on I year. did. Yeah, oh, I did. But, right, I mean, so. but I mean, again, like. 
It's look at held... the difference in the graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the difference in the graph is what I'm talking about. You've got a peak, but it's held steady. You've got a peak, then it spikes and then just dives. And, and it dive. dives all the way down past where we were at normal. Does this mean anything? No, I just find it interesting to see. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, looking at it like, yeah, yeah. I mean, just, just scrolling back. I mean, yeah, the, the, the numbers are about half what they normally are, but also there's not content right now. Yeah. That's the other thing. Right, where was is the last that, content drop? Where was the last uh, content drop? What was, when did, when were the, when did the, hang on. Uh, hang episode, on. I think episode three is out now, maybe. What? Either episode three uh, is out or is coming out soon. When did episode two drop? What? You completely broke up there. When did episode two drop? A while ago. We talked about it. Did we? Yeah. I don't remember that. You said you weren't. You said you weren't interested in playing. So we 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 are gonna we are gonna wait till the third one dropped and, and, and was complete, and we will go and play all three of them all all, all three of them to completion. That's what you told me. Oh, okay. I, I vaguely yeah. remember that conversation. Uh, uh, doesn't give me like. Doesn't give me dates. Hang on. Church Let's see. Expansion dates. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. The the problem is they've hemorrhaged out a lot of players right now, and you've got to get them back. Yeah. So, uh, act, and, but you've got to have enough. Two. You still have to have enough to 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 justify keeping the servers turned on. Now, as yeah. we were saying, this is only Steam, right? It doesn't talk about the console. And there's a lot of other. There's a lot of players on console. And the, and um, and and those don't. Those don't. And, and console the, 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 they don't release numbers, so it doesn't fucking matter, anyways. Right. For the most part, they don't. Um. Yeah, but now you can find and Destiny Two still in the best, the 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 most played. They're still in the top fifty. On yeah, the Xbox. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you know, there's still you could probably talk about it. You know, even if there's another ten thousand or so players there. Well, I mean, probably I, I, probably, uh, probably I, and that's 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 a conservative number. Um, I don't because we don't know the numbers. I'm just saying, even if there is just but, another 30, 10, 000, that puts you at thirty some odd thousand players. Almost right. forty. Let's assume that there's another ten thousand to twenty thousand on the PlayStation. So you're fifty thousand players, which yeah. is more than enough to justify keeping the lights on. Yep, absolutely. Um, but absolutely. hopefully that will remain. Given, assuming the lights continue to stay on, I think you're absolutely correct. We'll get Apollo. We'll get Behemoth. If we get anything after that, who knows? Right. Um, again. Again. And, and that's and and that's where I say the ball is in Bungie's court. They now have to do the thing that they've said they're going to do for years. Right. So do it. Just tell an interesting story. So do it. Tell an interesting story. Make me care. And right. make, make me, me give and, a shit again. And make, make make me give a shit about playing the game again. Because I was all in during the final shake. I was like, Stop this is... Stop putting in wet blanket characters that nobody likes. I was all in during the final shape. I was this game... like They, they, they did it during the final shape. And then the episode hit, and I was like, this is the same thing I was doing two months ago. Why should I care? And it was slower than what I was doing two months before. Again, why should I care? Make me care, Bungie. It is your job to make me care about your game again. Because I've played your game for ten fucking years. I've put significant hours of my life into your game. Into this game, For ten years. Make me care about it again, so I may, may, make me make me want to log in. That's your mm. job. Make me oh, yeah, make have, me make me and cheeks I go. Be, I can't be futz to log into Destiny Two right now. Make make me and cheeks go. Wow, this is this is fun. This is incredible for more than the moment to moment gameplay. Right. That's your task. Can you do it? I don't know. Yeah, we'll knows? see. Who knows? Right. We'll see. Yeah, like, I'd like. Stop I'd like to think you can. Characters. Yeah. yeah, don't put in characters people hate. I'm looking at you, Shahan. Yeah, that's not where you thought that was going to go, was it? Um, <laughs> I I was indifferent to Mr. Man from Lightfall. Fair. Fair. He was he was the Jar Jar Binks of Destiny Two. Sure, he was but put there for a purpose. He yeah. didn't actually. There was a couple of things that just didn't land. Yeah. With that character, and they they fumbled badly. A couple of comments and lines and reactions, but the character itself was like just there for me. Yeah, sure. Shahan, on the other hand, I find incredibly boring, and I'm like, this is who you've replaced Cade with? 
I see why you made Aldrin a guardian. All right. You know, and Aldrin, again, that's a great character, man. They and they they did it like one of the times they did not screw up. Because yep. I was like, if you give him back his memories and he turns back into an asshole, I'm going to be annoyed. Yep. And they didn't. You know, and they didn't. They merged the two. He has all those memories. Has And they did it. So I'm like, you can do it. See? It's like when a kid's learning to ride a bike and you turn them loose and they're doing it by themselves. And then they realize they're doing it by themselves and promptly fall over. <laughs> you know, see, Bungie, you can do it. Right. No, do trust me. I, yep. I agree. Do it more. I agree. But Give we're hitting more of that. Yeah, I agree. Okay, but uh, let, 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 let's do final thoughts. If you have any, uh, we're hitting about an hour and a half here. Um, I think you're right. I think the final thought is make me care. Yeah. I, 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 I think that for, for me, it's, it's, it comes down to what, you know, what, what we said a couple times during the show now is that it is your job, Bungie, to make me care. It is your job to show me rather than tell me and right. to have decent explanations as to why things change if they change. Um, because you've got people who have spent, you know, hundreds of dollars on this game at this point, you know, sometimes multiple hundreds of dollars, especially if they're buying it on multiple on platforms. Years. Yeah, right. 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 So, Which yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I, I think, too. I, 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 I think we should rename the, t- the episode title, just Bungie, make us care, you right. know, because that, 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 that's really what it's boiled down to. It seems like in talking tonight is that, you know, we need a reason to care about the game and to enjoy the game because right now I don't, I don't, I don't do either of those things. Yeah. I, I haven't even, I forgot even last week to log in and put, pick up my, my free bright dust. Oh yeah. Damn. Yeah. That, that was Jeff, bit. Jeff reminded me, he's like, Hey, did you log? I was like, you know what? I didn't log in at all last week. I just didn't care. Right. Right. I didn't care enough. But all right, guys, I think that's going to do it for us tonight. Uh, thank you so much to everybody who stopped into the chat um this will go up on youtube by tomorrow i would assume um it was a great uh, first episode of aggressively casual yeah. we'll uh, be back this, this is gonna be a bi-weekly thing i think um because we have a lot of opinions and a lot of things we <laughs> want to talk about oh, um i uh, and i'm really excited to, to share them with y'all and to see what y'all think but anyways guys we love y'all we'll catch y'all again real soon and uh if you missed this if you're just joining us check the vod on youtube tomorrow love you guys Peace out. This may be the last time you see me. (laughs) This might be the last gig I do. (laughs) At the end of today, I may just pass away. On the other end, it might be you.